Hi, this is George Cow, and I'm here with Michael Stone, one of the members of my Master Heart group coaching program. It's great to have him here. He's going to be sharing with us some wonderful, deep, uh, wise lessons from his journey of, of developing a business. Uh, Michael, great to have you here. It's great to be here, George. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So let me read your bio to everybody first and give people some context for what work you do, and then we'll go into some of the uh, sharings and, and learnings you can, sh you can uh, share with us. I've got my cat here, in case anybody's wondering. It's, I'm always a little distracted sometimes. He's like trying to bite my cords. Um, okay, so let me, let me read your bio here. So Michael Stone is a shamanic practitioner, teacher, mentor, journalist, and the host and producer of the Shift Network's Shaman Shamanism Global Summit and KVMR's Conversations. KVMR is, a, I guess, a, a radio show that you do. Um, he interviews leading edge thinkers, authors, and activists in the areas of environmental restoration, social justice, and spiritual fulfillment. Michael spent most of his vocational life as a corporate organizational development consultant, communication specialist, and leadership trainer. And now you're bringing some of the work that you've been doing with uh, shamanic you know, wisdom into, into the corporate world as well. So we could talk a bit about that later. Full circle, yeah. Full circle, yeah. No, that's good. So uh, one of the lessons you learned you know, in, in our conversation earlier was about fear. Uh, so maybe, maybe you could start there. What, sure. what, I think that's something many of us entrepreneurs experience. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's a major issue right now with the uh, change, environmental, social justice, uh, economic uh, you know, there's so much uncertainty and we have a desire to try to get it right, get it perfect. Uh, and uh, that loses the opportunity to really meet fear as an ally. Because when we try to get rid of fear or we try to suppress fear, if you're really present, you realize in the moment uh, fear is your ally. It is, it is frozen power. And the more we try to suppress it, the stronger it gets. So there's not, you know, people, and that, that's the same with anger or any emotion that rather than resisting it, which causes its persistence, we embrace it and open to it. And so fear, whatever you're afraid of, is really your soul's calling, wanting to emerge. These are the things that your soul is saying, hey, work on this stuff, confront this. Uh, walk into the fear and open your field of awareness to a greater uh, perspective. And so, you know, that's, that's a huge issue for people. Um, we, we look at things from a deterministic view that there's a cause and effect, but quantum physics is really breaking up our worldview, even though it's been around a hundred years, it's just starting to impact that. And it, it uh, teaches us some pretty important rules. One of them is that we're not separate. There is no such thing as separation in the entire universe. And at the heart of our suffering is this belief in separation. Most of my career has been uh, in organizational settings and my eye vocation working with the mystical uh, world and, and, and studying physics. But this idea that I am in this body, I have a reality centric to a self called form reality. And that means I'm an object in a world of objects, the old Newtonian Cartesian paradigm. Well, all that has changed. And there is clearly no separation. So when we go from this form consciousness into actually being embodied uh, and, and into the cellular nature, we realize that we've got 70 trillion cells. Each one has over 100 trillion atoms. Each atom has a proton, a neutron, and an electrical field, which is producing light and heat out to the edges of the universe. We are not in any way separate. And so much of my career has been to uh, work with interrupting that belief because our, our beliefs shape our perception and our perception shapes our reality. So that brings us to a place of really questioning our beliefs. And to do that, we need to be present. And, uh, 
you know, we are so fragmented and frazzled with the computer um, a world, the social media, the constant bombardment of information. And uh, most people have a hard time being still. And stillness is really also one of the lessons that we need to learn. We need to remove ourselves from the constant activity, still the mind and get embodied and begin to recognize that not only is it uh, uh, inseparable, but we can never have certainty uh, in a subjective world. We think it's an objective world. There's no such thing as certainty. But looking for certainty causes us huge anxiety. So a big part of the work I do is about embracing uncertainty to find the lessons within. And when we do that, we go into one of the third principles of physics, and that's potentiality. We unlock the wave collapse where we uh, made a story up about something that happened in the past. And when we actually recognize that it isn't the thing from the past, like you know, our mother did this or our father or some, somebody did this to me. That incident, you already survived that, but you're still living in a story from the past that protects you. That's why it's so important just to come around full circle to embrace your fear and honor your fear as a great teacher, a soul teacher. It's a long answer for a short no, question. Fantastic. It's, <laughs> there, there's a lot there that, that I'd like to unpack. Well, I mean, <laughs> Certainty is one of those things that entrepreneurs yearn for. <laughs> um, businesses, uh, basically, I mean, this is how the economy works, right? You, you, you need to keep growing at, at a steady pace. Uh, and that presumes certainty. And so let's, let's talk about this a little bit. I mean, sure. particularly when it comes to you know, what I call building an authentic business, which by definition is not formulaic, uh, but it is an expression, a spontaneous expression oftentimes of what is real for ourselves in the moment. Um, so certainty, if yeah. you want to really look, George, at certainty, um, it's not possible. And anything that you're certain about can only come from experiences from the past. So what you lose by trying to find certainty, constantly try to get it right, find certainty. First of all, you create enormous anxiety and stress for yourself. But secondly, you miss the opportunity to discover what you don't know that you don't know and open into the field of potentiality. The observer effect, Heisenberg's uh, observer effect, uh, you know, says that when you look at a wave, it, uh, it turns into a particle. Well, that's when you make up a story about something, it turns into a particle. You're, you're imprisoned by the beliefs that you have. And that's way more important uh, than genetics because right now epigenetics is completely debunking the whole theory of genetics. And we, and we realize that our beliefs actually change our genetics. And, and it's very much proven that that happens. So we, by going into these news areas and, and seeing the beliefs that are shaping our reality, we get to see the stories that are shaping the belief. When we deconstruct them, we realize that they're just stories from events that happened long ago, and then we can reauthor our own life. And, and reauthoring, you rewrite your life, and then, there's two major things. You have to embody that and live that and create practices consistent with the new story. But one of the things that most people don't get at is the community field. The community field is uh, we've trained all the people around us to respond to us based on the things that have come out of our mouth, our story. And so people know us to be, you know, Michael's this way, George is this way. And then when you start to change, number one, people don't want you to change because they know you a certain way, and it threatens their own reality and the facade that they live in, the story of themselves, uh, the self-centric reality. It starts to break that down, so it's a threat to them because people, especially in organizations, say, I won't call you on your, you know what, if you don't call me on mine. It's a conspiracy that, um, it is in our world. It's not just the corporate world. It's everywhere in our friends. And so 
you really need to watch the field because it's like when a drug addict goes 90 days clean and sober and comes back, he goes to see his friends, she goes to see her friends, with 24 to 48 hours, they're using again because they've gotten themselves back into the field of conversations, you know? And one of the things that people think in this embodied, in this form consciousness is that my brain lives inside this box. How it ever got relegated to that uh, is a story of the last 300 years. But more and more research is showing that there's a field of consciousness. And the most important thing we can do is begin to tap into the field, which taps us into the unlimited potentiality. That's fantastic. And tapping into that field is partly what shamanism has been about, right? Yeah. Um, so, so make that connection for us. I mean, you, you're, you're, you have had so many conversations with various shamanic teachers. You, do, you teach it yourself. You, you do your journeys. How does that connect to the modern science of quantum? Yeah. It it's totally connects to it. I mean, the mystics have been saying forever in shamanism for 100,000 years that we're all connected. But it's become a bumper sticker, you know, we're all one. Well, that's true, but that's not how we're living. And we're looking at the world from a skin encapsulated ego that's based on our past experiences. So, so uh, shamanism has been saying that everything is connected and everything affects everything else, and that's what physics is saying. Embracing uncertainty um, has been the magic of shamanism in that we look at, um, in an animistic way, in other, thing, in other words, everything as a soul, everything as alive, then we recognize that we're part of a living, changing, uh, massive organism called the universe, and we're inseparable from that. So very much what physics is saying, and, and doing in terms of potentiality, if our word is um, our power, which I, which I, that's a whole deep, long conversation, we'll get into it, but when we name things, in quantum physics, they call it a wave collapse. Uh, when, you, uh, when you look at a, a wave and it becomes a particle, but it's the same thing uh, in shamanism, they call it soul loss. It's exactly the same thing. So they're very much aligned, very much connected. And when you break up those beliefs, you begin to see that there's inseparability, that there's uncertainty in this potentiality, and then there's coherence. And coherence is a key thing um, both in shamanism and in the world of physics because it says, um, you need to be in a line with the larger systems of which you were a part. Shamans get their power from what? The mountains, the apus, the water, the waterfalls, the land. They don't think you know, they're particularly powerful. They get their power from the larger, larger systems in which they are part. So we're going from a, um, a system that's, that's um, objects in a world of objects to one that's all connected. And all of these things are being proven every day by coherence. Just being coherent with ourself and listening to our inner voice is coherence. Doing things in the world that, that recognize our inseparability um, gives us power. And most people think that power is force or control or manipulation or guns or money or whatever. But really, power is the ability to be present and to be conscious of consciousness and how it affects us and how it affects the field that we're in and the people that we meet and the people that meet us, we're always being affected by them. Um, so getting out of the remembered past and the imagined future and getting ourselves right in the middle where we have a stimulus and the old story wants to come up, but we have a gap with a choice point where we can choose a new story. Mm. Oh, brilliant. So you are um, creating a course right now called the Quantum Power Course. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that because you've been giving us some of these concepts that are surrounding this idea of quantum power. Yeah. Well, like I, like I mentioned in the beginning, people right now, I've never in my 73 years of being on the planet seen so much um, uh, fear and um, so much um, 
uh, people feeling powerless with the magnitude and complexity of the changes that are happening in the world. And we are not going to fix those things that are broken in the world with more stuff that comes from here. That is not going to happen. What's predictable is that we continue to, you know, it's Einstein's, if we continue to uh, do things from the way that they were originally discovered, they will not be any better. That's a terrible paraphrasing, but you, you get the idea. So um, the opportunity to um, really see where we give away power. And by the way, I have a power um, assessment tool that I've created, and I would love to share that with people. Uh, can I tell them how to get that? Please, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just write to support at welloflight.com. Um, uh, that's well, W-E-L-L-O-F-L-I-G-H-T.com. I also have my consulting uh, website, which it's, it's also available, and you can uh, uh, go there and request. And it's a power assessment tool for people. And, and what's, your, what's your consulting website? Do you want to give us the link? Yes, quantum consultinggroup.org. Yeah, and I will be sure to link that in the notes of the video for those who are looking Great. for it. Both of those Great. will be Thanks, available. George. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm doing this course with another woman who's an amazing belief change person. Um, she's worked a lot with Bruce Lipton and uh, uh, Sandra Wallen uh, also does equine therapy, uh, working with leaders uh, to understand uh, uh, their nature through being with horses. And it's a really brilliant thing. I've done it with PTSD people also, and it's amazing. Yeah. So um, that starts on, uh, let's see, what date? October 2nd. And then it's three Wednesdays at from noon to 1.30. And there'll be a lot of very practical hands-on work. So this is a this is an opening for uh, possibility for anyone who's feeling powerless in any way. And we give our w power away to the experts. We give our power away to, um, you know, our identity. We give our power away to our fear. There's one of the things you'll see when you take the questionnaire, uh, uh, the assessment tool, uh, is all the areas where we have power loss because they're all embedded in the questions. Oh, beautiful. That's great. And the, uh, the work that you're doing with, with companies, uh, tell us what kind of company would benefit most from this kind of work. And okay. Well, I've can... worked with everyone from uh, uh, the European Union, uh, uh, the EPA, to uh, Boeing, Microsoft, uh, Prudential. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with all different, mostly large scale uh, organizations in Europe and North America. Mm. And what kind of work are you bringing now to, to these kinds of companies? You we were talking about this quantum power, but to what, 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 what shift um, can be expected or, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a, that's a great question. So um, one of the things that, that uh, when people get to this place of presence, and I teach presence, power, and performance courses for leadership, um, when they get to that place, they renew their uh, creativity, their flexibility, their ability to focus, um, and their ability to be with people in an intimate way, uh, intimate and authentic. And I know intimate is usually not used in the corporate world, but I'm really talking about a level of connection that builds trust, that creates uh, integrated teams, so that's, that's the kind of work that um, I do in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. um, in, you know, my company that I started in, oh my gosh, uh, I guess either late 70s or early 80s when I actually started Mastery of uh, Management International. Um, our, our motto was bringing heart and meaning into the workplace. And that hasn't really changed, but it kind of sounds a little new agey. Uh, but it's really about connecting people uh, and the ability to have a successful organization or business is directly proportionate to our ability to relate with and inspire others through uh, very much like what you do, George. You, you talk about authentic marketing and, and uh, people know 
the difference between the, you know, jack them up, glaze them over and tell them they can't live without this. There's a way we give up our power. Mm -hmm. And people who were really there in service to each other. And um, I love organizations because they're such a breeding ground of consciousness. And, um, and they also want results. And I think that's a really important thing. You know, all of these concepts are fine, but the reason shamanism has lasted 100,000 years is it produces results. So they've gone through burning at the stake, genocide, you know, colonialism, and there's still, shamanism is stronger than it's ever been in the world right now. And it's because it produces results. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, great, great background for us. So, Michael, thank you for being on this, on this interview. And is there anything else you want to share, parting words of wisdom as we complete? Well, here? I just want to share, you know, you are such a shining example of uh, operating with integrity, with authenticity. And I know you're a tireless work. You put out so much work for so many people. And I just want to thank you. Uh, for that, George, because you're back there just cranking it out with people and and always available. It's it's truly amazing the work that you do. And uh, you know, for if for somebody who wants a real with a capital R coach, talk to George Cow. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate that. Well, I have the links uh, in the notes of the video. So those of you who want to connect with Michael and the quantum power course or anything that you're and the also the, the quantum power assessment uh be sure to check out the links below and connect with michael there so thank you michael for the work that you're doing um i know that you're about to go on a vision quest and yeah. right after this power course we're gonna yeah. head to the gila wilderness for 10 days of vision awesome. quest and then uh, you know just i, I think and i think it's really important just the last word is that we take care of ourselves, you know? I can, I can really easily, with the excitement around my work, not take care of myself. And we really need time for stillness. And that's what Mary Ellen and I are, are going to do, is take time to be still and see what wants to emerge in this world that's, that's here now. Oh, I look forward to hearing how it goes. Yeah. So thank you, Michael. And uh, I'm sure we'll connect again soon. I hope so. Thank you, George.